homeschooling isn't always picture perfect. Welcome to Homeschooling with Dr. B, where we'll help you find solutions to the challenges you face and celebrate your successes with you. Now, please welcome your host, Dr. B. Welcome, my tenacious homeschool tribe. Today, we're going to be talking about a question I often get asked as, wow, I can't believe it. A mom that has been homeschooling for six years. Seems like a long time now. So, how to create a schedule. Well, I have to be honest with you that when I started homeschooling, I didn't think about creating a schedule. I just kind of dove in. And my idea was we were going to start at a certain time and we were going to just continue till we were done. My kids had a completely different idea. They were used to being in a traditional school system and they wanted to start and then they wanted to be stuck on that table until later in the afternoon and they just kept dragging it out because they were used to being in school for seven hours and then doing homework from three to four hours every day. So they really expected to be spending the same amount of time homeschooling. But of course, homeschooling is a different educational approach. Don't need that. But my kids were ingrained into the system and it took us a while to break loose from it. I'm going to say a couple of weeks. Once the kids actually broke loose from the idea that they had to be stuck on this table working for long periods of time, I began to think about what kind of a schedule we should have. And to be honest with you, as a homeschool family, we have tried different types of schedule. One schedule that we tried was we were going to have a different schedule every day of the week. So on Monday, maybe we worked in the morning because we had an activity in the afternoon. On Tuesday, maybe we have an activity in the morning so we would do our schoolwork in the afternoon and so forth and so forth. So every day had a different schedule. And that worked really well for one of my kids. For my ADHD superhero, that did not work at all. She did not like that. Just like she didn't like working at the dining room table. She had to have our little homeschool room. She needed that. We had to adjust from this idea of a weekly schedule that had a different daily schedule. So then we tried, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to work from nine o'clock to noon. But that didn't really work for us either because sometimes we had opportunity for field trips or to hang out with friends. So, hmm, now we, if we stuck with that schedule, we were going to miss out on another opportunity. So that didn't work out very well. The thing that was the most successful for us was a time lock. What do I mean by that? The way our schedule was set up was that when we walked into the classroom, we were going to work for a set amount of hours. It didn't matter if we walked into the classroom at eight in the morning or at two in the afternoon. When we got there, we were going to work for a set amount of hours. That really provided a structure that both of my girls could work with. One of them, she liked it because it meant she was sitting down, she was going to get her work done. For my ADHD superhero, it meant that when she walked into this room, she was going to be there for a certain amount of time and she knew what she needed to do when she was there. And that worked for her. Now, you might think, well, this really is very similar to different schedules, different days. You're not entirely wrong. But for our family, what worked was this concept, this idea that once we walked into our schoolroom, we were going to be doing school work. It was for a certain amount of time, and that provided the structure. So the bottom line is that as a homeschooling family, 
you are going to have to experiment a little bit to determine what works best for your family. Now, in my case, I have to be honest with you. I'm going to put it out there. I couldn't have two different schedules for two different kids because when I started homeschooling, I only had two kids. I know some moms can do that. More power to them. I really admire the fact that they can do that. I can't. I won't. I find it too difficult and I have too many other things going on. So this is what works best for our family. But even within the structure, I have learned to be flexible. I have also learned that my ADHD superhero can be flexible if I give her plenty of warning, which isn't always possible to do, but I try to give her as much as I can so that she can make that mental adjustment. Now, one thing that is key in creating the schedule for you is for you to understand, it's for you to understand that your child doesn't need to spend seven hours in a schoolroom. Keep in mind that a teacher is typically dealing with between 20 and 42 kids in the classroom. She may or may not have an aid, depending on the state, the district, the city, the resources available to the county. For most homeschool families, they have an average of two kids. Now, there are some families that have more kids. There are some families that have less kids. But the average is about two. How many hours should you spend homeschooling your child? A preschooler doesn't need more than 15 to 30 minutes a day. They're young. Their attention span is very, very short. And really, they should be spending most of their time playing. Kindergartner, 30 minutes to an hour. Into that 30 minutes to an hour, have to factor in breaks. I give about, well, let's see. I'm going to say about a 10 minute break every 15 minutes, which can be challenging. Trust me, because now I have three 13 year olds and one kindergartner. It can be challenging to juggle the different schedules, but you have to try to work it out to the best of your ability. First to second grade, 45 minutes to an hour and a half would be good, maybe two hours. And frankly, you focus on the core, math, language arts. Everything else can be learned through hands-on experience in play. Let's see, a third to fourth grader, an hour and a half to three hours. We spent about three hours. Sometimes my kids could drag it out to four. And that was in part because we always understood that our goal was for our kids to go to college. Not every family is college bound. Not every family has that as a goal. And that's a consideration as well. Fifth to sixth grade, I'm going to say two and a half to three and a half hours. Seven to eight. Now you're getting into a more complex situation because you're dealing with middle school and you need to prepare your child for high school, especially if your child is college bound, as my family is. And high school, three and a half hours to six hours. Again, that depends on your goal. We do tend to spend more time, especially as we're moving, ending the eighth grade and moving on to the ninth grade, because again, we're a college-bound family, and there's certain subjects that we need to cover based on my children's specific interest. I have one that's interested in becoming an attorney, and she's really focusing on political science. I have another one that's into forensic science and research. So she has a completely different set of interests that we need to address. And we have a flourishing entrepreneur. Now, in her case, is college necessary? Perhaps not. We would prefer her to go to college, and that is her own goal. 
And let's face it, business school is a good foundation to entrepreneurship. So it really depends. Now, I have met a lot of families in this pandemic that have their children, oh my goodness, working seven hours at a desk with a computer. And let me tell you, that's a full-time job. And I know that a lot of the families are doing this. You could be one of these families because the school district is demanding a certain amount of hours. But the reality is that the way you teach in a classroom is completely different than the way you homeschool because you're not dealing with 42 children or even 20 children. You're dealing with just a few kids. You don't need to use busy work to manage your classroom. So you can focus on the important things, leave out the unimportant things. If you're not college bound, you might focus on the specific interests of your children. I knew a family whose kids were really interested in engineering and mechanics, and that was their primary focus. They studied the core. And the rest of the time they spend it working on engineering and mechanics. In fact, these kids, even before they graduated from high school, they had acquired a lot of certificates and licensing and were very successful as diesel engine mechanics and electrical engine. I can't even explain the full of it to you, to be honest. But they were very successful. They were very happy. It was the path their family chose. How much time you spend homeschooling is also going to be dependent on your family's goals. And that means your family's goals are going to help you choose the subjects that you want to cover while you're homeschooling. As I've said, we're a college bound family. Our kids believe that they have specific areas of interest. But let's face it, as a retired college professor, I can tell you that most freshmen, on average, change their major five times. So do I really expect that my kid that's interested in law right now is going to become an attorney? No, not really. I was always interested in teaching. I became a teacher. But even at that, before I became a teacher, I tried many different other professions. So who knows? She's also really interested in politics. Maybe she'll be a politician. You never know. My kid that's interested in forensic science is also interested in costume designs. She's interested in the theater. She is an excellent TikToker. Maybe she's going to become a set designer, a TV producer. Who knows? And my entrepreneur right now, I mean, this kid has magic when it comes to selling, okay? She's into it. But just a couple of years ago, she was interested in becoming a doctor. Then she was interested in becoming a uh, neurologist. <laughs> so a very specific kind of doctor. So who knows? What I try to do is I try to expose them to their areas of interest but at the same time, expose them to things they would not be interested in. I want them to have a broad type Renaissance education. I don't want them to just focus, zero in on one specific career. Statistically, we change careers seven times in our lifetime. Did you know that? I've changed mine at least four times but I'm only 55, okay? So I have three more to go, three more to go. So what's working for us now? We work on a block schedule now. And this is what this means. We always begin with grammar. On the day that I teach a new concept, it usually takes us between 20 and 40 minutes. On the days when they're working on that new concept, it takes us between 15 and 20 minutes. And I'm really, really into grammar because grammar is the math of the language arts. 
which brings us to the next thing. After grammar, we do math. We do a lesson every day, which is about 15 to 20 minutes. If the concept is confusing to the kids, it can take 30 minutes. And by the way, it's not that the concept is difficult. Sometimes they find difficult concepts really easy to understand, and sometimes they find very simple concepts incredibly difficult to understand. So it just really seems to depend on the lesson. We do a practice set, which focuses on whatever new concept we learned that day. And then we do a written practice. And according to the book, there's 30 problems. But some of the problems have two, three parts to them. So there's really more like 60 problems there. We usually do the odds one day, the events the next. And we talked about any problems that the kids might have that we need to address. Then the last subject of the day is what we call the daily subject. So this year we had literature, one day, composition, another day, a science, another day. We had language, second language, another day. I was trying to get the kids to learn Spanish because, well, that was my family's native tongue. But I'm going to be honest with you, have not been successful with this at all. I have one native speaker. She does really well with her Spanish. I have another kid that understands Spanish, doesn't speak it. And I have a kid that refuses to learn Spanish. So next year, I have one child that's interested in continuing with Spanish and the one that has been refusing her dream is to learn Japanese. So that's where we're moving to. And then we always do a social studies or a humanity. You know, we do history, sociology, psychology, political science, economics. So it really depends under that category. The subject for this year was economics and civics. We worked on that for about an hour, hour and a half. Now, the attitude that I took in the past was, we're going to do these lessons and then off you go. You do the rest of the work independently. And when they were young, it worked really well. But now that they're teenagers, that has worked as well as a lead balloon. It's become very challenging because, well, kids change in adolescence. So my plan for next year is we're going to do the lessons, take a break, and then they're going to sit down until they finish the work for the day. Then they can go off and enjoy their extracurricular activities. But I don't want to deal with having to make sure that they're getting their work done. All in all, when you think about it, in the traditional school system, your child is going to be spending seven hours in school and three to four hours every day doing homework if you're lucky, because I've heard from some parents, it's more like five to six hours. Your kid's not going to have a lot of opportunities to socialize or for extracurricular activities. My homeschoolers are going to spend an average of six hours a day working on their schoolwork and preparing for the ACT. And then the rest of the day will belong to them to socialize, to do their extracurricular activities, to focus on their own specific interests. I have, like I said, two TikTokers. Uh, I have a daughter with an amazing voice who's really into musical theater. So they have a lot of time to explore. And that was part of the reason that when it came time to decide whether to go to high school or remain homeschooling, my twins wanted nothing to do with high school. And my other daughter decided that she does want to go to a traditional high school setting. She wants that experience. Different things work for different children, and our family is going to try to meet those needs. But keep in mind, back to homeschooling, that your homeschoolers will finish their work in a lot less time than a child in a traditional educational setting. And you don't need to keep them to the hours of that traditional setting. In fact, I encourage you not to do that to them. It just seems cruel and unusual punishment for me. 
Now, in case you're wondering, how well do my kids do? My kids tend to test between the 98th and the 99th percentile in language arts and math. And in the last extensive testing that we did, they tested in beginning college level math, middle college level for, oh, I think it was grammar and everything else in ending college level. My kids do very well academically. And no, my kids are not gifted. We just do the work. You really need to keep that in mind. A lot of people think, well, your kids must be special. No, nope, nope. We just do the work. And they say, well, it must be, I mean, you have a child with ADHD. Again, we just do the work. I've always held them accountable for their academic work. So they do the work. So the bottom line, as far as building a schedule, what do you need to do? You need to focus on your kids' needs. You need to focus on your kids' goals. Your approach is going to be very different if they're not college-bound than if they are college-bound. And your family's needs. Our family has been challenged by my health problems. So there have been some times where we homeschool year-round because I'm so sick that I'll end up in the hospital for two, three weeks at a time. And we don't homeschool during that time. They wait for mom to feel better. And then I come back and we homeschool. And there have been other times where my health holds pretty good. And then we homeschool from August till May. And we're done with 182 days required by the state. And we move forward. Ultimately, keep in mind that one of the benefits of homeschooling is the flexibility to change your schedule based, again, on your kids' needs, on your kids' goals, and your family's needs. Okay, so let's end our episode by thanking our friends at Certainty who are sponsoring this podcast through their reusable replacement electro patches, which help you live pain-free. They do a lot of good work for my knees. Check them out at Certainty.com. Use the code OMB15 off for an additional 15% off your purchase. If you like the show, please, please share on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or whatever other social media you might use. If you have time, all of your social media accounts. Remember, life can be overwhelming, but homeschooling doesn't have to be. For links and resources, please visit our website. Till next week. Enjoy your kiddos. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Homeschooling with Dr. B. Head over to homeschoolingwithdrb.com for more information and resources. That's homeschoolingwithdrb.com. Until next time.